So welcome to another episode of my vlog. In this episode, I'm going to show you our trip to Andalusia, specifically to Malaga. Um, just the night before our trip, we went just stayed in some sort of uh, fairly cheap, um, easy sort of airport hotel in London Luton, uh, just because we had quite an early flight. So we, we sort of, you know, just wanted to stay locally so we didn't have to get up quite as early and have such a rush. So this is just our room in just the airport hotel. And then, yep, as I said, we got up early the next day. This is the departure lounge in London Luton. Um, so yeah, so we just took a simple um, easyJet flight to out to Malaga. Um, this is on inside the airplane, as you can see. The air hostesses are just serving drinks there. And then this is just um, sort of the beginning of the landing, so to speak. You can see the amazing coastline that Andalusia has. Spain's coastline is actually 5,755 kilometres long, so it's absolutely huge, really, really diverse. It's amazing. Um, and Andalusia um, is basically uh, described kind of, you know, sort of historically and also ecologically is basically being the meeting point between Europe and Africa um, and because of this it's got a huge range of uh, species of flor flora and fauna and trees um, in fact it's got the highest number um, of species in Europe um, and oh look at those amazing mountains there now Spain actually has an average altitude of 660 meters because some of Andalusia is very sort of mountainous um, obviously by the coast it's obviously a lot flatter, but you can just see there's amazing mountains in the background. Now, in fact, only Switzerland um, is higher than Spain because it's got an, Switzerland has an average altitude of 1,300 metres. So it's just a fantastic place. Um, there's a real variety. And the trees that you find in Andalusia, you know, you've got lemon trees, maple trees, olives, uh, groves, orange trees, fig trees, you've got Uda, which is a deciduous tree found along river valleys, you've got almond trees, they give an amazing um, sort of fresh pink and white blossom during spring, um, you've got chestnut trees, ash trees, avocado tr trees, cork oak, loads of stuff like that. Um, and this is actually just filming the garden of my parents-in-law. Uh, they've lived there for about sort of 15 years um, in the same spot. Uh, so they've got a really well-developed, amazing garden. They've got pomegranate trees. You see the swimming pool just there. Huge swimming pool, but we, you wouldn't sort of go in, in, obviously you wouldn't go swimming in the swimming pool in um, December because it's not heated and it's a bit too cold. And they've got, she's got, my mother-in-law's got amazing flowers. She's got hibiscus, hydrangea. Um, she's got an amazing variety, uh, star thistle, broom, honeysuckle, sage. Now this is where the family often unite um, to have lovely uh, barbecues and we eat there, just at that table there in the summer, so there's loads of memories there. And then um, we just, kind of, it was basically a family reunion and we just kind of all got together on the first uh, evening and we just watched um, old family videos. And it's quite interesting because this film that you can see here, it was actually filmed in sort of the 1960s, 1970s by my father-in-law. He filmed a lot of their um, holidays and a lot of their childhoods, which was very unusual in those days. You know, it's uh, it as common as anything now, but in those days. And they're all without sound as well. So they just sort of uh, got... Uh, it's just some music over them and then as a family we went out we just uh, we, this is just in a, in a bar um, that, that we just sort of went to and we're just sort of having a really good time um, and then we went on to a Chinese restaurant in Estación de Cartama it's just really simple it's kind of it's just a normal it's not a touristy place it's just kind of a local restaurant that Spanish use this monument is called Colomares Monument and it was built and designed by Stephen Martin Martin from 1987 to 1994 and it's basically dedicated to Christopher Columbus and it kind of unifies uh, sort of Byzantine, Romanesque, Arabic and sort of Gothic styles. It's incredible. So we're just on the way to Ben al uh, which is just south of Malaga and I just thought that the apps, obviously as I said before, you know, Spain is so, it's got so many areas which are high up. I just thought I'd film 
the beautiful descent down to the coast. It's absolutely beautiful, calm weather. It was delightful in Ben El Madina. And we went to a hotel where my mother-in-law was singing um, in the choir. It's a Christmas uh, concert. And this is the fantastic little nativity scene in the reception of the hotel. And I just thought it was really important to keep sort of Jesus at the centre of Christmas. So I hope you enjoy um, the concert. I'm just going to show you um, just a little just a little clip of the choir singing. My mother-in-law is the second in from the right with the red jumper and the grey trousers. So I hope you enjoy this little bit of singing. And the following day, after the lovely Christmas concert that we had, it was all an expat community, um, we went to a fantastic market. Uh, it was lovely, lovely, organic, fresh produce, absolute, huge variety, absolutely fantastic. Um, you've got loads of great fruits and bananas, um, you've got kiwis, you've got uh, ch uh, chestnuts, um, we've got eggs there, you've got all sorts of fruit and veg, cauliflower, uh, beetroot, tomatoes, lemons, potatoes, garlic, um, a huge variety of fruit and it ju that just kind of, you know, ref reflects kind of the, um, the rich culture. Um, oh, we've got lovely olives there. The, it reflects the rich culture um, and the, the diversity in the Spanish way of life because obviously you've got all the Arabic influences from the Moors um, historically. Um, so they've got a fantastic variety. There's even some fruits that we, we don't have um, in England. I don't even know what the name is in English. They're called Membrane. Um, and amongst um, all sorts of other things so it was absolutely fantastic it was lovely uh, to see all of this squash there and peppers and and oh, it's just fantastic um, so yeah I did make a couple of purchases which I'll be re revealing to you a little bit later on um, um, that there that's sort of dried strawberries as dried pineapple all sorts of different types of dried fruit that you can use in recipes and also just as snacks just to eat on their own you can see there's chia seeds there um it's quinoa which is obviously you know they're fantastic superfoods which have just sort of come into fashion just recently all different types you know it's dates it's all sorts of things there's uh, curcuma which is turmeric one of my favorites um and there's root ginger there um but also it wasn't just a food market it was absolutely enormous it was also a craft section so this is a lovely sort of bit like a craft fair but obviously you're in december and as you can see everyone's wearing coats and scarves and stuff but you know it's still really pleasant and lovely um so yeah and there was also another section of the market which was um clothes section uh, you've got all sorts of different types of clothes and, you know, warm, you've got obviously warm winter clothes at this sort of time. Uh, but it was really, really delightful just to sort of get to know the Spanish culture a bit. And this is me just going to the hotel room. I'm going to start filming in a second, so I hope you enjoy this bit. Hi there, guys. I hope you're doing really well. I hope you're enjoying... Um, my trip abroad. I hope you're um, enjoying everything that I've been filming so far. Um, so today it is the 8th of December. Uh, we've obviously come here to Malaga. I'm, at the moment I'm in a place called Estación de Cártama, which is where my parents in law live. Um, it's absolutely, I mean, you know, it's December, we're in Spain. It's an absolutely beautiful day. I mean, you know, just, just look at the sky. Beautifully clear sky. I just 
just love winter in Spain. <laughs> I think it's like my favourite time of year in Spain, or you know, the south of Spain, because it's just absolutely beautiful. Anyway, so as you saw yesterday, I went to an organic food market. It's absolutely fantastic, really great, fresh produce, really sort of buzzing atmosphere. I really enjoyed it. So I just wanted to share with you um, what I purchased there. So I bought this, it's called um, Miel de Flores Pollen. So it's um, sort of uh, bee pollen. As you can see, it's sort of um, the, the pollen taken from the bee's nest. It's obviously organic. It's absolutely fantastic, it's delicious. I have actually tried it in England. I've seen it one time only in England. I've never seen it for sale. I had it um, at a place called Morstan Hall, which is a one Michelin star restaurant. It's fantastic. It was just kind of like sprinkled on the chocolate dessert. It was just brilliant. Yeah, so um, absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really looking forward to kind of getting home and adding this to my recipes. Perhaps kind of when I have the flatbreads and I like to spread a bit of avocado over it, I might just, um, yeah, just sort of sprinkle that on top. So I'm really looking forward to that. And the second purchase that I made of the day was this. It's called Mermelada de Castaña Sin Azúcar, which basically means sort of chestnut jam and there's no sugar in it. Reason being is that the ingredients are chestnuts, water, um, cinnamon and like cactus syrup, which was obviously the natural sweetener that they used for it. So this is really um, sort of got me thinking kind of about chestnuts because I know that obviously in December all over Europe and especially in England you can pick up chestnuts anywhere um, in the supermarkets so it's kind of got me thinking and it's really kind of influenced me and made me think about uh, recipes which contain chestnuts and I'm going to show you a video clip in just a second where uh, last night I went out and I bought some chest just roast chestnuts in the street they're all over the place in Spain this, this kind of this time of year and even like the smell kind of reminds you of Christmas time it's absolutely gorgeous delicious freshly roasted chestnuts they have a little bit of sort of sea salt sprinkled over which of course is really good for you anyway so I hope you enjoy my little clip um, of myself enjoying some chestnuts and and then after that I've just got another little recipe for you because obviously um, I've been influenced by the presence of chestnuts in the Spanish culture and Spanish society at this time of year so I hope you're going to enjoy that recipe as well Hola. Hola, buena. Hola, me gustaría dos pacotes, por favor. Dos paquetes? Sí. De, de dos euros. Son 12 castañitas, dos euros. Ah, sí. Dos paquetes de dos, o es mucha? No, sí, sí, está bien. Vale, no, está bien. Dos Gracias. paquetes de dos. Ahí te lo pones. So this is the fruits of the purchase that I just made there. I just spent um, four euros on all of these lovely chestnuts. Just wanted to show you how easily the shell of the chestnuts just kind of breaks off as you just squeeze it. And I just wanted to show you what the texture of the roasted chestnuts look, look like in this clip. So the recipe is a chestnut mini cakes. Just putting 800 grams of chestnuts into on the boil there, wash them first just letting them cool off in cold water and then basically I'm just sort of cutting them in half and scooping the chestnut out from the inside so 800 grams is 1.9 pounds um, so basically uh, what you need to do is perhaps not quite like me you need to uh, make sure that they're still warm whilst you're scooping the inside of the chestnut out I think I let them cool down a little bit too quickly which is why they're sort of a little bit harder to scoop out but they still work absolutely fine um, they, they do go on the boil also for 30 minutes so just leave them in boiling hot water for 30 minutes now chestnuts are fantastic for brain function. This is because the fat soluble B vitamins in them help produce red blood cells. Uh, they break down protein and they break down carbs and fats for energy. And also they promote healthy skin and enhance brain function. Um, so yeah, um, a three ounce serving apparently of chestnuts contains 21% of the recommended daily allowance for vit vitamins B6. 15% of folate, 14% of thiamine, and 9% of riboflavin. So 
So I've finished scooping all of them out. I'm just going back through all of the chestnuts in the bowl, just peeling off that last tiny little bit of skin. Sometimes it can be slightly uh, bitter, so I'm just sort of sifting through, trying to get rid of any bits of skin. This is because what we're going to do is we're going to make chestnut flour, which is literally just uh, chestnuts on their own, um, basically in the food processor, and, that's, and it becomes flour. So as you can see, I'm just adding my chestnuts to my food processor. I'm also going to add one teaspoon of cinnamon and one teaspoon of allspice. So I'm just going to switch it on and just sort of get the flour ready just before I add my wet ingredients, which is one teaspoon of vanilla extract, two eggs, and three tablespoons of coconut oil, and two tablespoons of honey, and also one tablespoon of sweetener. Can you use stevia or uh, Splenda? I switch it on and blend it and then I'm going to add one banana. It's one large banana or two small bananas if you don't have a large one. And one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. And then I'm just filling it in. I'm obviously using a silicon baking tray so you don't have to use any other fats or anything like that. And then the, um, the, the mini cakes just sort of uh, pop out easily after that. I just like going over um, the silicon tray just making sure there's no sort of bits that will burn um, sort of that are out on their own. Um, so yeah and I'm going to pop it in the oven there. It goes on for 20 to 25 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit that's 175 degrees centigrade and now I'm just taking it out after that as you can see they're steaming there. Absolutely fascinating and basically um, I'm just serving them up now and you can serve them up with, I like to put a little bit of um, bee pollen on them or you can also add lemon zest or orange zest, they taste absolutely delicious, with a bit of orange peel there I've put on top and I'm just opening it up just showing you uh, the inside and the texture they're really light, really fluffy, absolutely fantastic and really, really good for you. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that you also subscribe to my channel. See you later.